Is there anybody here? That's what I want to know. Let's have a look. Is the soul like burning? Is the world returning? Uh, yay! Loads of people here! Some of them have even liked the fact that they've just been sat around waiting for me to get my eye makeup on. Hello! Oh, thank you for being here. Oh, someone else is like this now because presumably it's because of the emotional blackmail, sorry. <laughs> right. A plastic bag and a sheet of scrap paper. That's all we need. We're done. All I need to do is blow my nose and then I'm going to flip you around and get started. <laughs> I've got a very thin screen here, I'm going behind it to blow my nose, like that's polite, you're still going to be able to hear me. Alright. <clears throat> ah, Alright, I'm going to flip you, you ready? Ah, so nice. Oh, loads of likes, brilliant. Right. Do, do, do. I better earn those likes, let's go. <laughs> Ta da Hello everybody! Hello! I am Lara, this is Theatre of Science, IGCSE. So we've done 13 lessons on forces and motion, which is the first module we've done, and this module is electricity. It's the first lesson, and it doesn't have anything to do with forces and motion. So if this is your first time watching, welcome! What a brilliant time to start watching. Everything I do is free. Um, there are free printouts available to this lesson in my Facebook group. There's even, it's not there yet, but after the lesson's over, I put together a PDF of some like optional homeworks and future reading for you. Uh, and obviously the lesson is free and they're all available to watch on YouTube. Uh, there's an option to support me if you go to the About section. There's a website where some people are paying me, like five pounds plus a month. That's enough to keep me going. So welcome. Thank you for being here. Let's do it. Static electricity. Anyone who's ever watched anything I've done before knows that for a static electricity lesson, the first thing we do is get a cheap piece of plastic and rub it on our heads. This is actually, it's really gross. This is just the wrapping from um, a packet of biscuits that I ate yesterday. Yeah, a whole packet of biscuits. It wasn't open when I started. Right. Rub, rub a bit, cheap bit of plastic on your head. We've got like a 5p plastic bag. The thinner the better. We're trying to build up some static electricity. And then, it's not rocket science this, I'm sure you've noticed this in your lives before. Uh, hold the plastic bag away from you and then put it a bit towards your hair and you should find that it gets attracted. My hair seems to be more attracted to my face than it is this plastic bag. Maybe the little bits of biscuit oil <laughs> making it not work. That would be real, that would be a thing. If the bag was wet, I'll tell you why later. Is that working? Yeah, there you go, yeah. Strands of hair you should find are now attracted to the plastic bag. If you haven't got messy hair, you don't like having messy hair, you'll have to find someone in your house. Why does that happen? Well, first of all, I just gotta talk at you a bit. Some of you are just gonna know this already, and some of you are not gonna know, but at Theatre of Science, we always assume that everyone is starting uh, from scratch. So I'll just quickly explain what an atom is, okay? Um, an atom. Everything is made of atoms. Most things are made of atoms, all bonded together. But if you, if you could look with magic eyesight at one atom, what you would see is particles called protons. Uh, they are positively charged. I'll put a little plus symbol in. I'm going to label them because it's important. Here are protons. Um, they're right in the middle of the atom. They are tiny, but they're nowhere near as small as the little negatively charged particles whizzing around them, which are called electrons. Yeah, I know that some of you know this. Some of you might not know this. These are electrons. What does charge mean? Well, charge is a bit like, um, you know, magnets. Like if you hold them together, they can push away from each other. Or if you turn one of them around, they can pull towards each other. Charges are the same. All charge means is that opposites attract. So two of the same charge push away from each other, like a, two protons would push away from each other, repel each other, whereas an electron and a proton have got opposite charges, so they attract, yeah? Opposites attract. Pedants are gonna be going, eh, no, that's not an atom, there's more to an atom than that. Yeah, there are particles uh, next to the protons in the middle called neutrons, but we're going to ignore them. You can probably guess from the name that they are neutral. They don't have a charge, so we're not interested in them when we learn about static electricity. So it's pretty much all you need to know. Atoms, positively charged protons, with electrons risen around them. It's kind of, it's not ideal, but it's kind of a bit similar to like how the moon goes round Earth because it's attracted to it by gravity, yeah? Earth goes round the sun because it's attracted to the sun's gravity. The electrons are attracted to the proton, so they're kind of whizzing around them in a cloud. And 
even though atoms are like super important and everything is made of them, it's like weirdly easy for some atoms to lose their electrons um, or, to, or to gain electrons. Um, overall, as you probably noticed, this atom is neutral, yeah? Most atoms are neutral. Uh, they, they don't have a charge, right? So two protons plus two electrons whizzing around it equals a neutral atom. So most atoms have got the same amount of protons as neutrons, uh, as electrons. But yeah, electrons can pop off or pop on. And that's what we're interested in today. Uh, so <clears throat> if you understood all that, you've actually learned a huge amount of your uh, stuff that you need for static electricity in your exam. So, if you're doing IGCSE physics in the UK, your exam will either be written by an organisation called Edexcel or Cambridge. Um, they both write slightly different exams and need you to know slightly different things, but it's pretty similar. So here's what they say about what you need to know for this bit. Edexcel say uh, you need to know that there are forces of attraction between unlike charges and forces of repulsion between like charges. Yeah, so unlike charges, like opposites, a plus and a minus are attracted. Uh, like charges, so like a plus and a plus, a positive and a positive, are repulsed by each other, hate each other, want to be moved away from each other, yeah? Uh, Cambridge have gone into more detail. I can't be bothered to read it all out. You have to say that positive charges repel other positive charges. No, you know, it says the same thing, all right? So congratulations if you've got that far. Well done. Um, so what is actually happening? I, I did this little plastic bag to because some of you, like me, will be visual learners and this, this will help, right? The plastic bag, when you first picked it up, was um, neutrally charged and your hair was probably neutrally charged as well. But when you rub the plastic bag <laughs> onto your hair, what happens is electrons, the negatively charged particles from the plastic bag, pop off and onto your hair. This is why I was giving you that like weird question on the holding page about... Um, about blue, purple paint, like if you got two blobs of purple paint and you took some blue out of one blob and put it in the other blob, you would end up with some purple paint that was less blue and some purple paint that was more blue. This was, the same. This was warming up to this idea that can you see if electrons have popped off the bag and moved onto my head, my head is now more negative and the bag is now more positive. Is that okay? Yeah, so the, yeah, this is, well, that, it, the bag is less negative. And my head is more positive, negative. Is that, that's fine, isn't it? I can take off my head now. Um, so that's why your hair is attracted to the back, yeah? Because you've now, you're holding a positive thing and your hair is a negative thing. So attraction, good. Um, I, you don't actually have to know which way the electrons are going, which is good because uh, it's a bit confusing. Electrons are actually moving from the bag to your hair. But when, if you pull a woolly jumper on, and your hair gets a bit staticky, electrons have actually moved from your hair to the wool in that situation. And if you scuff across a cheap carpet, electrons are moving from the carpet to you, which is why you get an electric shock sometimes if you then go on to touch something. Yeah, you don't need to remember that. In the exam, you can just say electrons were transferred. Um, it, just, it just depends. Some materials, they'd rather, they really want to like give up their electrons and some materials are very happy to receive electrons. Um, yeah, you don't need to remember that, but actually while you're here, I thought it would be quite a useful way of testing whether you've understood. Can you do this little question sheet for me, please? Um, if you went to my Facebook group, you'll have this in front of you. If not, you can just make notes, can't you? It's pretty easy. Um, in situations one, two and three, can you say what charge each object have after the electrons have moved? So if electrons move from a bag to hair, then the bag, is the bag then positive or negative? And is the hair then positive or negative? If they move from hair to wool, then the wool ends up being what positive or negative, and the hair ends up being what positive or negative. And number three, if they move from your body to no to your body from a polyester carpet, what's the carpet and what are you positive or negative? I've deliberately tried to make it confusingly worded because that's what the exam will probably do. finished and you're bored you can always like and subscribe i'm sipping coffee because that's the only way i manage to stay quiet five seconds okay let's go through it then right electrons negatively charged yeah well 
here's an atom. Protons in the middle, electrons whizzing around down the outside. It's the electrons that pop on and off. So if electrons move from a bag to your hair, the bag has lost electrons, right? So that would be positively charged. And um, they've moved to your hair, so the hair is negatively charged. If they go from hair to wool, if the electrons have gone onto the wool, then the wool is now negative and the hair is positive. And if electrons have gone to your body from a carpet, then your body is going to have electrons. So your body will be negative, so the carpet is positive. If you didn't know this, how cool is this nice way to write positive and negative? This is a perfectly acceptable shorthand in physics. Just do a little positive sign and then a VE or a negative sign and a, a VE. Nice, eh? Right. Um, but there is one question that we haven't covered, right? Oh, yeah. First of all, I'm, I will just say because this is, it's, it seems obvious now because we're in the lesson, but in the exam, it's a classic mistake that everyone makes is to say uh, that it's the protons that are moving around. It's not if you... If you add protons or take away protons from an atom, it changes what the atom is. I have a slide I will show you. Here we are, right? Here's an atom of hydrogen. It's the simplest atom that you can get. Uh, it's just one proton with an electron whizzing around it. If we add another proton, that's not hydrogen anymore. It's actually helium, like what you get in balloons. Uh, you can add electrons to that helium atom. In fact, it would normally have two, so, right? So the atom is, ends up being neutral. Um, but you can take an electron away. Regulars know, I just I love that burn uh, thing that PowerPoint can do. You can add electrons, you can take them away. You can add, I mean, you wouldn't be weird, but you could add loads of electrons. That's still going to be helium. But as soon as you add more protons, you've changed the atom. So if there are six protons in an atom, then it's carbon. If you add two more protons, you have oxygen, okay? Um, Obviously, that isn't what's happening. Like, when you pull a woolly jumper over your head, you don't end up, like, the wool doesn't change into a different material, your head doesn't change. So it's, it's the electrons that are moving around, the protons are very much staying where they are, because otherwise you would be losing, like, bits of your body when you rubbed a bag on your head. That would not be cool. So, yeah, the important thing that we haven't mentioned is, well, I'll show you again. PowerPoint time. Um, electrons move from the bag to your hair, so your hair becomes negatively charged. Why does your hair stand on end, though? Have you, you noticed this? It's not. The hair is attracted to the plastic bag, but something else is going on, isn't it? Your hair kind of gets all sort of fluffy and wavy, and if you did it a lot, your hair would end up sort of sticking up. Why is that? It's, just, it's not that obvious. I'll give you 10 seconds, and then I'll tell you. Right, <clears throat> I'll tell you. It's because, um, well, think about it. What has actually happened? Your, your hair has gained negative charge, right? Electrons have gone onto your hair. So this strand of hair is negatively charged and this strand of hair is also negatively charged. So they're both gonna be attracted to the plastic bag, but they are repelling each other. Yeah, your hair is now, your strands of hair are repulsed by each other. That's why, um, like in the diagram, if hair has a like charge, uh, really sort of powerful like charge, then you end up with hair sort of looking a bit like this, flying all over the place, because every strand is trying to get away from every strand. Um, right, let's do, I'm not sure, I don't think this will come up at IGCSE, but um, it's, it's interesting. It, it might be a question that you have that we should answer. And also, it's just a good excuse to do a couple of fun activities. Get your plastic bag, rub it on your head again, and you should have, if you've got a piece of scrap paper, just take a few little tiny bits of scrap paper and put them on a table or something, yeah? Comme ça, there you go. So tear up some teeny, teeny, tiny little bits of paper, put them on the table, and then start charging your bag again on your hair, uh, or someone else's hair, if that's better. What, what we, you know what we're going to do, and you know what is going to happen, right? So what, what's going on right now? Electrons are moving from the plastic bag to our hair. So we've ended up with a positively charged plastic bag in there. Is that okay? The bag's lost negative charge, so now it's more positive than it was before. If we touch it to the paper, what's, you know what's going to happen, but I'd better show you, because otherwise it's just, it's just boring to tell you, isn't it? Charge, charge, charge. Put... Oh, gasp! The paper has moved onto the plastic bag. Why? Why is that? Why is that happened though? It's quite like why? Can you? You can't really explain that with what we've just learned, can you? Because the paper, obviously, we didn't charge the paper. We didn't rub the bag on the paper, so the paper had a neutral charge, 
and things that are neutral are not attracted to things that are positive or negative. So what's going on there? Well, if you've got a tap, please don't like hold a phone or put a computer near a tap, but if you can listen to my voice and you've got a tap near you, can you turn on the tap so that you get the thinnest flow possible that is a smooth flow? Laminar flow, if you do IGCSE, if you do like A-level physics with me, you'll learn about this, but yeah, get a really, really thin flow of water, charge your bag again, and then hold the bag next to the water and see what happens. If you haven't done this before, I'm, I'm so excited that I get to be the one to show you this, because it's so cool. But come over here. Um, I've put a board up behind my tap because it, I think it'd be easy for you to see. Right, so really, really thin stream of water. Mm, I think that's okay. Okay, charging my bag. And then, yeah, hold the bag near the water and we're going to talk about what happens and why. Why? Ready? Wow, come on, can you see that? The water is clearly bending. It's really, really bending. It's so cool. I feel like Harry Potter. Isn't that awesome? If you've not seen that before. Who knew that with just a plastic bag and a tap, you could have so much fun. I'm going to do it again. Whoa, the water's really bending towards the plastic bag. The water has been attracted to the plastic bag. Why? Why? Wherefore? Let's, uh, let's come back and find out. <coughs> because water... <laughs> great hair. Water doesn't have a charge either, does it? You would be correct in thinking that the water that comes out of your tap is not like positively or negatively charged. That would be really weird and unhelpful. But... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, water particles are super special. I don't think this is going to come up at IGCSE, but it might do. Uh, if this is an incredibly simple water particle, one side of the water particle is slightly negative, and one side of the water particle is slightly positive. It's, uh, it's called a dipole particle. Uh, chemistry. Um, so <coughs> now you can probably guess what happens. When you get a positively charged plastic bag, and you hold it near the water, then the, the water particles all line up so that the negative sides are pointing to the positive plastic bag. And they're, yeah, they're attracted. They experience a force, right? An electromagnetic force, amazing. Um, so that's what happens. With the paper, it's slightly different. Um, the, with the paper, and this is the same thing that happens if you rub a balloon and then stick it to a wall, the particles in the paper, or the particles in the wall, um, they, sort of feel the positive charge on the bag and all the electrons are attracted and that's so so you get a kind of more negative charge uh, on the on the paper particles that are near the bag does that make sense because electrons can move like they're whizzing around in a cloud so you've got a whizzy cloud in a piece of paper of electrons positive bag comes over and all the electrons go <gasps> like that so that creates a kind of charge yeah, that makes sense. The force, okay. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> the last thing that your specification says that you need to know about is um, a practical to, in well, I'll just show you and read it out. So Edexcel are pretty mysterious about this. It just says 2.23p practical, sounds fun. Investigate how insulating materials can be charged by friction. And Cambridge say, as usual, a bit more, describe simple experiments to show the production of electrostatic charges by friction and to show the detection of electrostatic charges. And basically, describe a simple experiment to show um, like a, a, a how you would detect a charge on a thing. So you, you got a plastic bag, you think it's got a charge on it. That's right, we just mean like it's positive or it's negative. How would you work that out? How? To be honest, I wasn't entirely sure of like the details, so I had to go online and tell you. Just before I tell you what I found out, can you go and grab a metal spoon? Like just now, go, you're wasting time, get a metal spoon, go. I, I got mine yesterday because I've done this lesson before, so sorry, I'm a little bit ahead of you. Get a metal spoon, rub that on your head and see what happens. Have you got it? Hopefully you don't live in some sort of palace where you have to like quickly run down eight flights of stairs and beg the kitchen maid for a spoon and she's busy stoking the fire. That's probably not you if you're watching this. You've probably got a private tutor. Uh, right, 
hold the spoon away from you and then put it back to your hair and move it to, like we did with the bag. What is happening? Probably nothing. Nothing's happening, right? So very quickly, because we're actually going to talk about this in future lessons. Nothing is happening because <coughs> uh, metal allows electrons to flow through it. So there's no electrons like stored on the spoon. OK, um, yeah, they can flow. The reason you call it static electricity is because charge is getting kind of stuck. Right. So when you're holding the plastic bag, electrons can't flow from your hand into the bag. They just electrons just don't flow well through plastics. We will look at why later. So the and the, again, electrons can't flow through your hair to anywhere else. So that's why it's it's stuck. It's static. So that's static electricity. Um, when you do it with the spoon, if the spoon ends up losing electrons, electrons will just flow from your hand into the spoon and everything will be fine again. So uh, that's, what the, that's what the word insulator meant here. Insulating materials, yeah. Uh, it's just insulating materials are things that electrons and other particles that can't flow through. Okay, so here's what I found. I found a website that said, oh yeah, I'll sort you out with your practical for your IGCSE physics. It's called possibly a little arrogantly bestphysicshelp.blogs.com uh, and this is what they say look they've even quoted it practical investigate how insulating materials can be charged by friction you rub a balloon on your head for one minute the balloon should now carry a charge so when you put it next to a wall it should stick and that's because the electrons have transferred from the balloon to your hair uh, so the balloon has a positive charge and this positive charge attracts, attracts the electrons in the wall inducing a negative charge onto the wall uh, yeah, that's good science, isn't it? It's a lovely word, inducing. Uh, yeah, makes the chart wall have a negative charge, so blue and sticks. Why is it not very good, though? What's wrong with it? I was unimpressed. I went elsewhere for help. Why is that not great? I mean, maybe you get away with it with Edexcel, I suppose. You definitely wouldn't get away with it with uh, the Cambridge, what they want you to do. What's wrong with that? Five seconds. Uh, it's not an experiment, is it? You're not testing anything. You're not measuring it. It's just doing a thing. This annoys all science teachers all the time. Everyone on the internet is like, oh, look at this cool science experiment for kids. You just put bicarbonate of soda in vinegar and it goes, that's not an experiment. It's a fun activity. It's not an experiment. Experiment is testing something to, to get results, right? To come up with a conclusion. So rubbing a balloon on your head, it's not, it's not an experiment. I found a better experiment, which I will, I will show you now. Here we are. Simple experiment to detect electrostatic charges. <clears throat> you will need uh, two clamp stands, like that. some nylon, put plastic, just in case you didn't know that nylon is plastic, some plastic string, nylon string. Uh, you need a polythene rod, which is hanging from the clamp stand by the nylon string. And then you need another rod just made of the material, the mystery material that you want to test it to see if it has a charge. Um, so the first thing you do is you hold the polythene rod in the center and you rub the ends with a cloth. You ready? You've got to be watching the screen now because this is time for some amazing bit of science special effects. Cloth, rub. <laughs> and what happens is we know this. Uh, electrons will transfer to the rod. So you've got a negatively charged polythene rod. What can you say about the cloth now? It is slightly positive, yes. Uh, and then you hang the rod from the clamp stand. You've got to be very careful not to touch the ends of the rod. And then you just do the same thing with the rod being tested, using a different cloth. You ready? So you rub uh, the mystery rod with the cloth. And we don't know what, you, what happens then. Do electrons move from the cloth to the rod or vice versa? Does nothing happen? We don't know. That's the whole point. Um, so I have some questions for you about this experiment. What might you expect the rods to do? There are three options. What would you be looking for the rods to do in order to get some results? Um, question two, why not use metal wire to hang the rods? Question three, if I test eight rods, name two things that must stay the same for each test to get reliable results. For example, I've put uh, length of the rod or humidity of the room. Just, uh, just pause for a, a tiny rant here. Um, in, when you're doing a science experiment, it's really important that you only change the thing that you are testing. And this is common sense, right? Say I'm doing an experiment to see if different materials uh, make my hair stand on end more. So I would change this plastic bag maybe for like uh, a woolly jumper or a piece of cotton or I don't know, a clothes peg. But that's the only thing I'd change, yeah? I wouldn't 
I wouldn't do this on my hair and then try the cotton on my mum's hair and try the wool on my husband's hair because we might all have different types of hair that might respond differently. So it would be important that I kept the head of hair the same, yeah? When, you, when I'm teaching oh, adorable year seven science, they always end up going, keep the ruler the same, uh, keep the table the same, keep the light bulb in the room the same. No, no, you do, you're not getting two marks for that. that. It's just keep things the same, that if you didn't keep them the same, the experiment would be affected. Okay. Minor rant over the year sevens. I love you. Let's keep on going. Uh, final question. Why is it important to use a different cloth for each rod being tested? Why don't you just get one cloth and use it on all the rods? Why? Right. I'm definitely going to drink lots of coffee now and give you um, a good minute to get this answered. I've got up to 34 in my head. because in the exam you, you might have someone next to you going <coughs> <coughs> for question four a lot of people on question four yesterday when I did this lesson on Facebook were saying um, it's important to use a different cloth for each rod because the cloth will be positively charged that is true but it's not a very good IGCSE answer that doesn't explain why you should use a different cloth. Right, I'll go through the answers. I'll just, just while people are finishing off, I'll just give you a hint for question four again. Yeah, why is it important to use a different cloth on each rod? A lot of people were saying because the cloth would be positively charged. That is true, but it's, it's not actually why you should use a different cloth. You need to explain why that is a problem. If it's a two mark question, you probably get one mark for saying the cloth is positively charged and another mark for saying, why is that a problem? All right, let's go through the answers, bearing in mind that this is on YouTube and will be until YouTube, I don't know, closes down. So if you, if I'm going too fast, you can always come back. Uh, why, what might you expect the rods to do? Some of you will have just said, attract, repel, do nothing. Eh, probably better to explain some movement. Um, they could rotate away from each other. So if this mystery rod is also negative, they would start to spin in opposite directions. Or they would move towards each other. <coughs> Excuse me. Attract each other. Or they might not move if the rod isn't holding a charge at all. Uh, question two. Why wouldn't you use metal wire to hang the rods? <coughs> Sorry. Um, it's because the electrons could flow through the wire and the rod wouldn't be charged anymore, yeah? Which would obviously ruin the experiment because you're supposed to know that the polythene rod has a negative charge. Uh, if I test eight rods, name two things that must stay the same. This was pretty tricky, I think. I said uh, the number of rubs or the amount of time the, rub, the rod is rubbed with a cloth. So obviously you wouldn't want to rub one rod twice and then rub the, <laughs> rub the other rod a thousand times because it would be unfair, wouldn't it? You wouldn't get reliable results. Um, the material of the cloth needs to stay the same. And also I've, I've said the distance the rods or the clamps are from each other um, because oh, uh, because actually this, this charge that we're talking about, it's, it works the same as gravity. It gets the, 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 you feel the charge less and less and less the further away you get, but we'll do that when we look at magnetism. Uh, and finally, why is it important to use a different cloth for each rod being tested? I've said, so the positive charge on the rod doesn't affect, so the positive charge on the cloth doesn't affect the charge on the rod. So if you're rubbing a rod with a positive cloth, obviously 
the electrons that were on the rod might want to jump off the cloth and then your experiment is ruined. Right. Ah, well done, you lot. So that is pretty much the end of our static electricity lesson. I have some tester questions for you. Just, I think it's, they're all multiple choice. I think I've done six. Six multiple choice questions to see how well you've understood this lesson. Um, I have to do my ad. It's, it's very embarrassing and painful for me, but without my ad, people don't support me. And if people aren't supporting me, I would have to go and get a job like in a school or something. So if you have enjoyed this lesson, if you are using me as a resource and you're used to paying for your lessons, you can go to the about section of my YouTube channel. Uh, and you'll get this link to a place called Coffee, where loads of people, bless them, are supporting me with five pounds a month. You can pay six if you like, or you can pay ten if you want to, but five pounds is enough to keep me going. Um, and I'll send you nice things because I will be very grateful. You will get Theatre of Science magazine, which my husband designs and I write. It, it's very good. So if you sign up today, I'll send you the Pine Trees issue which has a whole load of stuff about what is a pine tree. It's got a beautiful comic about uh, the First World War and how pine trees were related to quite an amazing moment in the First World War. It's got a Christmas tree spotting guide, which you can pull out and keep. So if you're in the woods, you can answer these questions and it will tell you whether what you're looking at is a Christmas tree. Super proud of Theos Science Magazine. It takes me ages, but yeah. Uh, so yes, if you want to receive that with a few really really small free gifts, and some rainbow glasses that make you see rainbows, uh, and an explanation of how the rainbow glasses work, and all this stuff, then um, sign up on coffee. Thank you very much indeed. Um, right, are you ready for your, your quiz? Oh, yeah, come on. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> the movement of which particle is responsible for static electricity? The movement of which particle is responsible for static electricity? Is it proton, neutron, or electron? Five, four, three, two, well, it is, generally speaking, most of the time, the electron. Well done. Question two. I've tried to make this one hard. Why might your hair stand on end when you go down a slide? Why might your hair stand on end when you go down a slide? Is it because, A, electrons have transferred from the slide to your hair and your strands of hair are repelling each other? Is it because electrons have transferred from your hair to the slide, so your strands of hair are repelling each other? Is it because electrons have transferred from you to the slide, so you have an opposite charge and are attracting each other? Or D, is it answers A and B, or A or B, but there's no way to know for sure without research? That was a, a toughie. I'm just sitting here with teacher smug face. I'll give you five seconds of silence for that one. The answer I'm saying is D, because you don't know. You don't have to say in your exam, unless they've given you information, which way the electrons are going. You have no way of knowing. Positively charged strands of hair would repel each other, just the same way that negative strands of hair would repel each other. So you know that electrons have been transferred and your hair, all you can say is that your hair has, all your strands of hair are, are charged and they have the same charge. So well done if you got that. Well done if you didn't get that and you're still here. <laughs> After a polythene rob, Rob? Ah. After a polythene rod has rubbed, been rubbed with a cloth, the rod has a positive charge, a negative charge, or no charge. You rub a polythene rod with a cloth. Is the rod then positively charged, negatively charged, or not charged? It's just a memory game, this, but you might need to know it if they ask you about an experiment. Uh, the answer is, if you remembered our diagram, uh, it is negatively charged. That's what happens to polythene when you rub it with a cloth. And second to last question, I think, why should you be careful not to touch the charged parts of the rod if you're doing that experiment? Why should you be careful not to touch the charged parts of the rod? Is it because the electrons will flow through you? Is it because the electrons will move to the other end of the rod? Or is it because protons from your body will flow into the rod? Three, two, one. It's because the electrons will flow through you, right? You've touched the charged rod. Ah, oh, the electrons have flown through you. They're in you now. Why is that a problem? Why would that be bad? Is it because you would get a damaging electric shock? Is it because the rod would no longer be charged? Or is it because the rod would be positively charged? Five, four. Uh, it's because the rod would be no longer charged. So your experiment would be spoiled. Is that okay? 
right? If you, if, a, if you touch a negatively charged rod and the electrons flow into you, the rod is, is neutral now, right? It's just lost its extra electrons, so it's not positively charged. Um, you wouldn't get a damaging electric shock, you might get a slight sort of staticky shock, like if you pulley woolly pulley woolly jumper on, uh, but that's not going to be dangerous. Um, it would just be that the rod would no longer be charged. Well done, you lot! I'm not saying well done for getting them right, I'm saying well done for coming, because obviously it's your choice, not like a school classroom, is it, where you've got to sit here and be polite or get told off. Very well done for being here, very well done for answering those questions. I'm now going to my Facebook page, because um, before a YouTube lesson, I put a little thing up on my Facebook page saying, I'm doing a lesson on YouTube, if you want to say hi, you can say hi here. So at the end of the lesson, I always go to uh, that post where I find people are saying, Lara, you're writing backwards and you don't have to. Lara, we can't hear you. Lara, this whole lesson has been a disaster. So I'm just going to read those comments now. Oh, brilliant. Look, it's Grace and Rose. Or maybe just Grace. Bye, thanks so much. I really enjoyed the first lesson back. Oh, I am really enjoying myself. I was ready to put the chocolate oranges down and start teaching again. Oh, <clears throat> Grace is saying, because the protons and electrons will transfer from rod to rod, because the atoms will transfer. No. Atoms are not transferring. That would be weird if you got a static electric shock and you like gained whole atoms, like you weighed more because you got electric shock. No, it's only electrons that move, not protons. Thank you for leaving that comment so I can tell you that. We will watch replay when the cold will leave this building. <laughs> Hill, good luck. <clears throat> hello, Chloe. Hello, Grace. Oh, it's Grace. Hello, Betty. And hello, Eben. No, wait, you're. Are you. Maybe Eben's there. Maybe Laura's there. I don't know. People are tagging each other. Thank you. That's also very helpful for me. <laughs> okay, you lot, thank you so much for coming. Um, I'll put an advert on Facebook and I'll really try and post on Instagram as well to tell you when these are happening, but same time, same place next week uh, for another lesson on static electricity. Um, if you like this, you might like the Lego Storytime show that I'm doing tomorrow. It's uh, on Facebook and it's on YouTube tomorrow at 2pm if you prefer that we're learning about hibernation. Just gonna tell you everything I learned about hibernation and do a little Lego story time to illustrate some fun story that I read about. Right, I'm gonna go. Uh, if you have enjoyed this and you want more science, I'm doing an all ages lesson on the periodic table on my Facebook page in 20 minutes. So I might see you then. See you soon, thanks for coming, bye.